So, um, well done. So thank you for getting involved in that. Okay, what we're going to do now is, as you know, for the last um, couple of years, we've introduced, uh, uh, you could say, uh, well, it's, it's fun, it's competitive, but it also showcases some great work that's being done around, um, around the country, and that is through our uh, Innovation X uh, project or program, and it's now in its third year, and it's a, it's a friendly competition that celebrates innovation within the Bureau. And there are three presentations that you're going to enjoy in this part of the session. And we want you to, you know, cheer them on, whistle, clap, throw your chairs around, whatever you want to do to... Um, to and now, you'll need to vote as well, and I'll explain that um, at, the, at the end, but there are three bureaus that will be presenting this year. But before we hear from them, I'd like to invite um, Christina from Simpleview, who have been very uh, kind in supporting the Innovation X uh, program and say a few words as well. So thank you, Christina from Simpleview. Uh, it's used by more than 385 DMOs around the world. So it's literally vetted by like thousands of users each day. And that's how we can evolve our software and, and, and you know, make tourism better. Um, you know, innovation's about continuing to come up with new ideas to help connect tourists, meeting planners, meeting attendees to local area businesses. And that's, that's kind of the big picture here. We, um, we need to you know, create more economic impact and prove our value to, to the communities. So um, I, I would say that you know, Simple Views innovation never stops. It comes from listening to our CRM and CMS user groups, um, our advisory boards. Um, it's a, a board of you know, DMO leaders around the world, Karen. You're on our advisory board, thank you. And you know, not only is it a forum for ideas, it, help, it helps keep our innovation on track. So um, I would love you know, to start some sort of user group here in Australia. It's all about collaboration and working together. And um, you know, we, we really want to support you guys. You, have a, you, know, you guys do business a unique way. It's uh, different than American. It's different than Norway. Iceland, you know, China. So we want to make sure everything fits for you guys. And I just want to give a special thanks to Adelaide, Gold Coast, Melbourne, uh, Northern Territory, Tasmania, uh, just for your continued partnership with us. So thank you guys, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Christina, and for your ongoing support as well. All right, three presentations, as I mentioned uh, to you, with the uh, Innovation X this year. So they are uh, Business Events Victoria, um, Bureau of Business Events Cairns and the Great Barrier Reef, and the Brisbane uh, Convention Bureau as well. So we're going to hear from, um, is it Chris? Chris Porter? Where are you, Chris? Come on up. So please put your hands together. Presentation one, Innovation X presentation from the uh, Business Events Victoria, Chris Porter. Thank you. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris, Chris Porter from Business Events Victoria, and I'm their Executive Officer. Uh, some of you have been asked this question a couple of times throughout today, so I thought I might just clarify it. No, I'm not Karen's boss. I wish I was. <laughs> we work alongside the Melbourne Bureau, but we have a sole focus on regional Victoria. So we let the great work that they do in attracting international conferences to Melbourne and filling up their convention centres and our hotels in the city. And what we do is we try and drive Melbourne uh, corporates, associations, domestic tourism out into our lovely regions and, uh, and, and from interstate as well. So I also have to thank Andrew Hebel for the opportunity to be up here today. So it's, been, it's, it's a good opportunity. I'm, gr I'm glad I could be up here presenting in front of you. So Business Events Victoria. Now, I've got a very innovative topic to talk to you about, research. Now, it doesn't really matter which way you look at research. 
it's still just research. So we're not going to talk about the fact that research in itself or the research that we're doing is innovative. It's everyone is doing research. We're going to talk a bit about the platform that we're using to actually capture data. Now, research in itself is, is very valuable and there is some great information out there from, or from a big city perspective, from a national perspective, but from a regional perspective, there isn't a really a, a lot of good data. And so what we wanted to do was actually drive a program that could actually showcase or actually show the true value of what business events is worth to our regional economies in Victoria. And what we needed to do to do that was actually bring the entire state along for the ride with us. We have 11 regional tourism boards in Victoria, so we needed to engage with them. This program, or the program that we rolled out across the state, was actually rolled out originally in Mornington Peninsula and down at uh, Business Events Geelong. And so we've worked with our partners on a collaborative basis to take that research that they've started and now have rolled it out across the state. So what does the Business Events Monitor do? It basically is an online portal that provides businesses with access to a cloud-based platform where they can enter data, enter data on business events. Now, this is basically what the survey looks like. So they have their own individual logins that they can go into and actually, uh, on a quarterly basis, on a monthly basis, feed their data in to an actual portal that will actually provide them with real results. So as I said, all, ven all venues have access. Now, it's only the venues that have access to their own information. So we actually ask them a question about what is the actual value of that business event to your venue. They're the only ones that see that information. No one else actually sees that information. What I see, being the portal owner, I suppose, is just the collaborative amount of dollars that sit in that pool across the state. And that doesn't become known until there's enough fodder in the feeder, I suppose, to actually um, make sure we can't pick out which business is doing what. And that's from across the region and from across the state. So as I said, these are the key seven areas that we're actually tracking at the moment. And what we wanted to do, hardest thing we're trying to get industry to fill out surveys, is that if it's too hard, they'll just walk away. So basically, there are seven questions that we ask, asking of our venues. And we're asking the venues to fill this out on a quarterly basis. Number of events held, delegate days, room nights, uh, as I said, revenue, how many inquiries have they received, so we can sort of see what that conversion rate is like, and then we track two marketing things with the industry sectors and also with the uh, where are our delegates coming from. We have an administration porthole that we run so we can actually measure and look at that data uh, as it comes in. So what happens is uh, the system actually sends out an email at the end of the quarter uh, reminding all of our lovely venues to fill out the information. Uh, once, if, if they filled it out, they don't get another email, they don't hear from us. If they haven't filled it out, they'll get another email two or three weeks later. Um, but we can actually track which businesses are doing this. So if we then need to jump on phone, send additional emails, we can do that because we can see who's filled out the, the data. So the best thing about this data is it actually provides real-time uh, results to our venues. So basically, once they've put their information in, they can actually compare how their business is going to the state average. So straight away, they can see that. Destinations like Geelong and the Mornington Peninsula, because they're collaboratively involved with us, the venues in those regions can actually compare their business or their venue against the region and then also against the state. So it gives them a really good way of tracking how their businesses are actually going. What we can also, what it also is good for is for businesses to actually use it as their data collection tool. A lot of business, some businesses have really good processes in place in tracking this and they'll find this survey to fill out in about two and a half seconds. Businesses that have kind of not as good reporting mechanisms find it a bit more difficult. So they can actually use this software to actually keep a running total of how they've gone. Now, we've only collected two quarters of data, so the first six months of this year. So we aren't up to full cycles yet, but I thought I'd show you some uh, just some results that we're starting to see and how we can start to pull data out and compare them to regions. So um, what I've done here is day events and overnight events and we've got um, the state average versus Great Ocean Road. So for years of you who don't know the Great Ocean Road, the key main destinations along the Great Ocean Road are Torquay and Lawn from a business events perspective. They've got some really great venues down there. But as you can see from this data straight away, they actually have a higher proportion of overnight events, which is what you expect about an hour and 15 to two hours from Melbourne uh, than what you do have from a day event perspective. We can also show um, the number of attendees that are, that are occurring. So 
they, they, they obviously punch above their weight when it comes to overnight attendees compared to the rest of the state. We can see what sectors these businesses are coming from. So we can actually report back to industry saying, well, these are the areas that you need to focus on um, in attracting more business events from these areas. Or maybe you do need to spend some time out on these other ones uh, which aren't as uh, active in coming down to your region. So this kind of data we can uh, make available to our um, partners in region. And then finally, I talked a bit about origin. So on the state there, we know that 80% of our business comes from Melbourne in itself. That's where we spend most of our time, promoting most of our services, dragging corporates out into regional Victoria. Great Ocean Road, it's only 62%. So they, do they need to be spending more time in Sydney where they're getting more and more uh, of a share of that slice of the pie from the New South Wales markets? So this is really core data that these destinations can use to target their marketing um, initiatives. Another key factor of the program is the total economic impact. So we've built this into the, the system as well. We can work out from the uh, revenue that they've put in what the, you know, direct, um, the direct economic impact of the businesses are, but then we have the indirect me measure also. And again, this has always been a little bit up in the air with regional Victoria. We know you hear sums of $500, $700, $800 per night. I can tell you they're never spending that in regional Victoria. We know around about it's around $200, $300 is about right for an average um, delegate in regional Vic. But what we want to be able to do is be able to have a standardised approach that, you know, Mildura is not using $350, uh, Mark from Geelong is not using $200. There are all these indiscrepancies. We want to make sure it's a standardised approach so that we can go back to government, as we've all heard throughout the last uh, morning session, um, that we're all on the same page and everyone knows what we're doing. So as you can see, just from our first quarter of this year, um, it's probably a little bit unclear, but there's about $100 million of indirect benefit from business events into regional Victoria uh, this, for the first quarter of this year. So being able to have that number that we can take to government is, um, is really great. So why is this innovative? Um, it's a high quality live data that we can provide our businesses. They don't need to fill out a survey, send it in, wait for three months to get what they want and then receive it back uh, with the results. They can get it as soon as they've put their data into the system. As I said, you can compare your results to against the state average. So you can track how your business is going and maybe put some changes in place so that you're actually um, meeting some demands or some needs that you aren't actually currently meeting if you're falling behind. The all important economic impact measure that we've heard about, you know, we want to be able to consistently tell or speak about how strong or how powerful our industry is to the, to the powers that be. And as I sort of said, strong business case for future investment in regional business events. Everyone wants to do business events. They're not quite sure how to do it in regional areas. Um, you know, you've got, your, you've got your performing arts centres that want to play in that space. So we want to make sure that we're filling these centres and we're actually investing in this area. So that's me. I don't have any other things for you to hear. There's only one more thing I want you to take away from today. Now, it is a competition. So this is all you've got to remember <laughs> at the very end. When you get that piece of paper, vote one, Business Events Victoria. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on. Uh, second presentation is from the Business Events Cairns and uh, Great Barrier Reef. In fact, it's a team effort, this one. Uh, all four uh, up uh, Coming up, is that right? Four? Three, all three, all right. Will you please make them welcome? Second presentation, Generation X, Cairns and Great Barrier Reef. Seems familiar. Um, I would also like to say thank you to Andrew for that, um, telling us last week. Anyway, um, we decided to um, focus on our member professional development program. Um, as for this award, as you all know, as a convention bureau, we have a responsibility to um, our members and also to our business events trade. Um, we identified a gap when dealing with our members, um, specifically event coordinators, um, event executives, and yes, sometimes even um, at director level, that there was um, the service um, received from hotel to hotel or to um, operator to operator. Um, 
vary greatly. So some of our members could run a site inspection and return the uh, perfect proposal with their eyes closed, whereas some... Yeah, not. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's the nice way to put it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, there were a couple of different reasons that caused this. So sometimes it was due to a high level of turnover, which happens obviously everywhere, but in a regional location, it can happen quite a lot. Um, and we also found that staff were being hired with little experience or they were being hired with experience and then thrown in the deep end and um, with little to no mentoring. Um, given our regional location, we also don't have a um, lot of access to um, professional development programs that are offered by um, peak um, industry bodies. We also have a large diversity within our membership, so we needed to make sure that we could tailor a day that would suit everyone. So problems like this mean that as a, re um, as a whole, our region is not being represented in the best way it could be. Um, and we spoke with the Convention Centre and they were feeling the same um, frustrations. Um, and it was being felt everywhere. And if, with our business event, with the feedback from our business events trade, it was being felt everywhere. So how do we fix this? I mean, we can talk till we're black, in, black and blue in the face to our members, but um, how do we fix it without preaching to them? Um, so as we do an me um, annual member update, we decided to integrate a member professional development program into it. So the goal of the day was to educate our members on the different industry segments um, and give them the tools to ensure inquiries and events in the region are managed efficiently from the initial inquiry all the way through to the execution. Um, we also wanted to use the day to highlight the diversity of the business events industry. Over to you. We're doing tag team today. Um, so what did we do? Um, and I really want to point out at this point that I was really the only person in that signing the checks. It was really actually a team effort between the two lovely girls here and Kim, who's back in our office, our uh, destination content executive. So what we did was we sat down and said, well, what does this day look like? Um, we decided we needed a facilitator, and for the 50% of the audience that has been to a previous AACB conference, they would know of Nigel Collin, who has got an uh, enormous amount of experience within the business events industry, but also a great facilitator, and just got some really simple, basic concepts about um, how to make changes and how to innovate and how to do things a little bit differently. So we rang Nigel, Nigel was available, so we, we engaged him for the day. Um, so, as Emma mentioned, um, we, had to, we have to do, as a member, I suppose, KPI, we have to do a, an update each year. So, we got the boring stuff out of the way really early in the piece. Um, Monica, was, Monica from TA was there and she did her annual member update and got that out of the way really quickly. So, then what we wanted to do is really concentrate on, well, what do our members need to hear? So we looked at the sectors within our, within our um, region and we, being the location we are, we have, a, we have almost a 50-50 mix between national and international events. Um, we are very heavily skewed towards corporate, which is corporate meetings, but also the incentive market, both from you know, North America, Asia, that type of thing. And then a smaller sort of percentage um, in the association sector, which also represent a large, I suppose, number of delegates, obviously, through the convention centre. So we looked at what event organisers are active in our region and we decided to contact Karen Livermore from ID Events, who many of you may know, Kim Hesse from um, uh, Venues to Events, who works very much in that corporate space, and then Mike Pickford, who is the owner of ASN Events, who's very, very involved in the association sector, I think is a secretariat for the PCO, a association as well. So he's got a really good understanding of that particular sector. We sent them a brief and said, OK, guys, we really want you to come up and talk to our members. Um, we gave them a brief on what they had to cover off on, which was things like, talk about your talk about your sector. What, what is, why do people hold association conferences? Why do people have corporate meetings? What does an incentive reward look like? So talk about their sector. Talk about the expectations of clients. And it was really interesting when you look at an association executive versus a, you know, a high-end guy from America that's come in on this you know, amazing reward program, what the, what the, the differences are within those sectors as well. We talked about um, the distribution change. So how is an event one? How is an association event one versus a corporate um, conference versus a you know, high-end international incentive from the United States? 
Um, we also got them to talk about what their expectations are when they're dealing with our members, and that was a really valuable part of the day. It's like when I do a site inspection for an association client, this is what I want. But if I'm here on an incentive, I don't need to look at five meeting rooms. I just want to know that you've got free Wi-Fi in, the, in there and you've got, you know, really comfortable beds and, you know, you'll get turned down service every night and that type of thing. Um, we asked them to give good and bad examples of um, experiences that they'd had in the past without necessarily naming and shaming people. But it, it really gave our members a good um, opportunity to hear straight from the horse, horse's mouth exactly what it was that was important. The other part of the day was all about, um, we talk about content development. And it's, it's a mantra that everybody's talking about at the moment. We were just about to launch a new website. Um, we had Monica's expertise there, and also Kim, who works as our destination content executive. So we, we then spent the afternoon talking about content, talking about what makes good content, what makes bad content, what, what social media channels work. You know, should you use LinkedIn? Should you use Twitter? How should you use it? Why should you use it? Um, we talked about um, the publications, and I know Brad's here at the moment. I'm not going to, again, name and shame. <laughs> but, you know, there's so many, you know, we've got MiceNet now that's going very much from, you know, print magazine to now you can have it online. So, you know, if you're advertising in that, and our members get contacted all the time about advertising, we asked our, our panel, you know, if should I be advertising in MiceNet? Do you read MiceNet? What do you take out of MiceNet? That type of thing. So, again, it gave them a bit of clarity around if I'm going to spend advertising dollars, what I should be spending it on and how I should be, I guess, maximising the opportunities with that as well. Um, so that was a really good in interactive session. They had to write a communications plan and, you know, incorporating print and digital media and social media. And our, our guest speakers um, gave them feedback on whether that would work or not work. So it added a bit of humour to the day. Um, the last session was obviously we had Nigel there and his expertise, so we talked about, we asked him to pull the concepts from um, which have been at previous conferences, the, the game of inches and going from good to great, and just leave people feeling a little bit inspired about, you know, how I can actually make a difference back in the, um, the workplace. Just a couple of other things about the day. Um, we were, we were pushing, um, from a financial perspective, we couldn't make the day completely free to our members, so we took the risk and said, right, we're going to charge everybody to attend this event. Um, as a mem you know, while it's a member benefit, we're still going to charge you to come along. Um, and it was just, I think, the day delegate rate that the hotel was charging us on the day, plus a, a a little bit of top up on top of that. There was two reasons we did that. One, to add credibility to what we were doing. So you get something for free and people will turn up and not turn up and that doesn't actually add a value to it. Um, but the second was to also minimise the no-show factor as well. Um, we had a really good response rate. Nobody balked at having to pay for it. So I'd sort of suggest if you know, any of the bureaus out there that are struggling a little bit, don't don't be scared to put a price on some of the activities that you do. Um, there was some, some of our, what we call our leisure tourism members who don't pay to be a business events member, but they wanted to come along, so we charged them a little bit more than our business events members. Um, the speakers all gave their time free, but we covered their airfares and accommodation and meals while they were in there as well. So um, I'd like to now hand over to Eleanor to tell you how successful it was. So how did we know it was a success? We looked at the feedback from all of our members and it showed that our industry now has a greater understanding of how the events industry works and they know that when working with the different sectors, they need to incorporate what each sector needs and how that can differentiate between them. Uh, when holding a site inspection, they need to work, or they need to provide, um, or can provide, um, meeting requests on Outlook or floor plans, site plans, all of those things that can help the event organiser on the day, um, and also how important communication is. Um, that was a really big key during the workshop, um, how important that was, and that picking up the phone rather than sending an email can make a difference. Um, looking at the content presentations from Monica and Kim, um, that really highlighted how important content was, and our members now know to contact us and they're sending us information on a more regular basis. That content is relevant and it makes our job so much easier um, for social channels and for our website and different things like that. Um, on our social channels and on um, our members' social channels, they now know how to uh, work with those and connect with different organisers and connect with us, whether it be on hashtags or be at on different, uh, different pages and which channel to use. Um, yeah, so that worked really well as well. 
um, and the results from Nigel's presentation, um, our members are no longer feeling overwhelmed. They understand that change happens and change can happen slowly and that's okay. Um, and that it is a game of inches and step by step th things ch do change. Um, so each member is incorporating that differently into their organisation, whether that be in their daily work or some are even using it at sales meetings and different things like that. Uh, overall, the day was 100% success. Every single member who attended was happy with the day. And in fact, we had 75% give the highest rating of the day. So wonderful response with that. Um, but rather than hearing it all from me, I've got a video to play from our members and from trade. And we had a niche focus group called Business Events Port Douglas, which is why I was attending the workshop on the day. We uh, came away with some really great tips that we've been able to implement, particularly into our website, where we always felt we had a very positive presence, but the day really highlighted for us that we needed to dig a lot deeper and really expand on the information, the floor plans we provided and capacity. So we've been able to implement that, that really assists with um, organisers and planners when they're looking for our destination. Hi, I'm Cathy Taylor from the Cairns Convention Centre. I attended the Business Events Cairns Great Barrier Reef workshop and I can say I was pleasantly surprised. The changes that I felt was uh, needed within our industry up here actually have started to occur since the workshop. And um, what I got out of the Professional Development Day is we've redesigned our conference website um, and that's resulted in a lot more RFPs. And also we've implemented um, Nigel's gap theory to all our sales meetings. Hello, my name is Karen Livermore. I'm Director of Sales and Events at ID Events Australia in Sydney. I recently attended a product workshop at, uh, in Cairns for Business Events Cairns and Great Barrier Reef in June, which was an amazing, um, innovative, product, member-focused uh, workshop event, which really I think is helpful for all suppliers in region to deliver what our clients are expecting on the ground. We were really grateful to be part of the process and I just want to thank the Bureau for having such a proactive approach to industry. Thank you. So where we're going to go from here, we don't want to lose all of this information that we've got um, from all of our trade. So we're in the process of developing an induction manual that we're going to provide to uh, new business events members and new staff coming into our industry so that they have an understanding of those different things. Um, this will be a membership benefit uh, as a business events member and our team at Business Events Cairns and Great Barrier Reef will make sure that everyone understands the information that's in that. Thank you. Thank you to the Cairns and the Great Barrier Reef team. All right, final presentation uh, is from the Brisbane Convention Bureau, Juliet Alabaster. Where are you, Juliet? Come on up. Final presentation, then it'll be up to you to vote. So we'll be walking you through that process. Juliet, over to you. Great, excellent. Thank you, Andrew, for the opportunity as well. Okay. At the end of a long haul flight, uh, the first thing I like to do, uh, apart from having a shower, is one, have a big juicy red apple, and two, go for a nice lovely long walk in the city I've just arrived in. Now, sometimes this can be a massive hit, like when I arrived in Rome and happened to stumble across the Vatican just as the Pope was addressing the, um, the gathered crowd in St Peter's Square. Uh, it can also be a massive miss, like when I arrived in Denver and took a stroll around, you know, a few blocks and all I could find was some tacky resale stores and about eight Starbucks. No offence to our American visitors here. Luckily for us here in Brisbane, we have a red army of Brisbane greeters and it is their passion to accompany people on those first walks around the city to help them get a taste of it and to really set them up for a great experience here in Brisbane. Now we have 200 uh, volunteers as part of our um, Brisbane greeters. They speak 25 languages, not each, across them. Uh, and um, Brisbane joined um, the Global Greeter Network in 2012 and we were the 27th city to do so. And now it has grown to have over 130 destinations. Um, others in the room um, also have greeter programs, Adelaide, Sydney and Melbourne, I believe. Um, now, 
Having participated in a greet yesterday, I'm sure these people can attest to the quality of this service. But that's enough from me. What I'm going to do is hand over to one of our resident greeters, Blair, who is going to tell you about the program, about storytelling, and why he loves being a Brisbane greeter. One of the things I think that I like about cities is you're not the first person to walk through that city. And so it brings out that sense of wonder of who's walked here before, what's happened before, how did this all get to be where, the way it is now. I often tell people I can't walk more than 20 meters in Brisbane without stopping and telling a story. It's like a performing art. History is the plot. The streets are your stage. The buildings and public art, your props. And the people, they become your characters. When you ask yourself a question as to, like, why did man build a building or a piece of art, you find that the answer isn't the building or the art. The answer is the people behind it, it's the personalities, the characters that make that come alive. And a building can come alive, or a piece of art can come alive. And it's alive because of the person who made it. I've been doing these tours for two and a half years now. I've probably done, well, hundreds of them. You think, well, you'd have exhausted everything that's on this street, but it doesn't. It's amazing. The amount of stories that are just waiting to be told through the city are fantastic. The Brisbane first that surprises people is the use of electricity and electric lights. We were the first city outside of London or New York to have a system of street lights. People will say, I've lived here my whole life, and I never knew that. I'm Blair, I'm a Brisbane greeter, and I've made it my mission to discover those little hidden gems and secrets of Brisbane and to share them with you. Now, having um, celebrated their fourth birthday earlier this year, and not actually being run by the Brisbane Convention Bureau, but rather by the leisure tourism team at Brisbane Marketing, Brisbane Greeters itself isn't actually the innovation I wanted to talk about today. Rather, the innovation is about a collaboration over the last six months that's enabling the Brisbane Convention Bureau to deliver a volunteerism experience to conference delegates. Over the past few years, the Brisbane Convention Bureau has been working with Brisbane Greeters to deliver tailored greets for specific conferences, including a military history, horticulture, acoustics, and uh, cycling. Not really, but... You know, we do them on cycles. Um, these greets are organised through the Bureau and they attract a small fee because of the unique uh, contact that, uh, content that's curated for them. More recently, Brisbane Convention Bureau and Brisbane Greeters have teamed up with City Smart and Tangaluma Eco Marines to create a new, unique volunteerism offer. By way of background, City Smart is Brisbane's sustainability agency created by Brisbane City Council to help make Brisbane, the nation's most sustainable city. Through their Green Heart brand, they collaborate with community, industry and government to drive greater sustainability outcomes for cities and regions. Tangaluma Eco Marines is a Brisbane-based not-for-profit foundation. As a registered charity, the foundation works to improve the water quality, sorry, the, quality, the water quality of waterways in adjacent environments throughout southeast Queensland to ensure the marine environment of Moreton Bay is protected. The new volunteerism option offers conference delegates a city-based greet coupled with a green heart cleanup at a designated waterway site that feeds into the Moreton Bay catchment. As such, delegates will explore Brisbane's green heart on a city-based greet which will showcase such things as our building and infrastructure at the forefront of sustainable design, the largest stormwater harvesting facility in Australia, and Brisbane's free inner city market garden, Epicurious at South Bank, full of seasonal organic produce that is harvested and given away to the general public. At the conclusion of the sustainable city experience, the greeter will transform into an eco-marine guide and transfer with the group to Nudgee Beach Reserve which flows straight from the foreshore onto the tidal mudflats of Moreton Bay. Here, delegates will stroll the boardwalk 
exploring the extensive mangrove and salt marsh ecosystem, learn about the diverse wildlife, um, particularly the bird life, and participate in the cleanup along the way. This collaboration is seen as a win, 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 win. Clearly, oh, that's Morton Bay, by the way. Um, clearly, we're better together. Um, Brisbane greeters get to expand their knowledge of the city that they love through the specific training that has been developed for this program. City Smart is able to further spread the word about sustainability to an even broader audience. The cleanup activity is designed to assist in reducing rubbish going into Moreton Bay, which is the direct aim of Tangaluma Eco Marines. And the Brisbane Convention Bureau is able to offer conference organisers and delegates a real connection to our city, a trend that is certainly on the increase for global tourism. With 2,500 attendees for the World Water Congress and Exhibition 2016 descending on our city later this month. Our new volunteerism offer is set to be well tested. Our ultimate goal is for this innovation to be replicated across other CSR projects to develop a full suite to offer in the future. And of course, our Brisbane greeters will be central to that. Stay tuned. our three uh, presentations from Victoria, from Kansas Great Barrier Reef and from Brisbane as well. Thank you. Okay, now um, it's up to you to vote. So we're, we're going to spend the next couple of minutes um, asking you to vote. Now it's one voting slip per bureau. So please keep that in mind, whether you're at the table with your staff or whether or not you're with uh, other people. So uh, one voting slip per bureau, and you need to rate the presentation three to one, three being the best, and one being third. So one voting slip per bureau. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, if you were one of the presenters, you have to give yourself a one. <laughs> All right, so keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, just a couple of more minutes. Ah, there is. It's three. Just to recap, it's three for the best, two and then one. So three for the best, two and then one. <laughs> okay, just another minute. And uh, will someone be going around collecting them? OK. Yep. So uh, Rob's going to go around and collect them. Uh, Laurel's going to go around and collect them. Yeah. OK. Thank you.
All right, I think we're all done, so thank you. Okay, anyone still have slips they haven't handed in? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We might move on if that's okay. So if we can have you seated again, thank you very much. And I think what's really, um, what's really great about the uh, Innovation X uh, presentations each year is the fact that you're being you're being judged by your peers, so that's a great effort. <laughs> that can be rather daunting as well, but uh, it's a great exercise. And congratulations again uh, to Chris, uh, the team from Cairns, Great Barrier Reef, and to Juliet. And the winner will be announced at tomorrow night's gala dinner, so you'll have to wait until, until then. I know. I'm going to have to wait another day. <laughs>